Hello everyone, and welcome to the program. We're going to begin by having a talk about motion. Now, the key reason for this is because one of the primary purposes of taking a physics course is to be able to properly communicate the motion of an object to another person. This could be a classmate, a teacher, an AP exam grader, a college professor, your boss. Now, we are all quite accustomed to talking about the motion of the objects uh, in our everyday language, discussing throwing a ball, uh, watching a car drive around, players in a sport. However, how we discuss motion in casual conversation and how we dis discuss motion in a science laboratory or a classroom is a bit different. And part of the purpose of this course is to properly teach you how to communicate these things. To start off, motion could be represented in a few different ways. Examples, written descriptions, drawings, diagrams, graphs, and mathematical values. Now, if, let's say, an exam question, if someone who wants to assess you really wants to see if you understand the motion of an object, they will ask for multiple representations. They will ask for a few of these that are on the screen uh, to really make sure that you have an understanding of what the object's doing. So not only do those descriptions have to match what the object is doing, they also have to match each other, obviously. And if they and if they all match, it really shows that you know what you're talking about. So a few examples of an object's motion and how they can be expressed are where the object is, how far has it traveled in what direction, how fast is it going in what direction, how quickly is it changing velocity in what direction, and how long it has been tracked. Now, in physics, drawings are king. There are a lot of different types of visual representations that are very important in physics. Not only that, uh, the old phrase, a picture is worth a thousand words, is actually quite true in physics. For the motion of an object, to describe it in word form, what could take you a paragraph to say, quite often could be drawn in about 10 or 20 seconds. So especially for something like a timed assessment like the AP exam, drawings are a very important and very easy way to communicate your understanding of the motion of an object to whoever is going to look at this at your work later. And not to mention that person could be you. So if you take notes on the motion of an object and you look at it a month later, having multiple representations, including your drawings, will allow you to very easily uh, bring your mind back to what you were doing and have a good understanding of what was occurring at the time. So we are actually going to start with a very particular type of drawing called a dot diagram, which is going to lead into what is called a motion diagram. It is a very simple way to express the motion of an object, uh, but it is also very effective. So with no further ado, let's get started. So we're going to start up by analyzing the motion of this man who is going to move from left to right. And in the background, I'm going to have a metronome play, which means you're going to hear ticks at evenly spaced intervals. And every time I hear a tick, I'm going to place a dot on the screen that represents where the man is located at that point in time. As you can see, the dots are evenly spaced. Now, let's talk about what that means. So I'm going to put on the screen a pattern that matches the pattern that we just saw with our moving object. Notice the dots are evenly spaced, which basically means that the object moves at a constant velocity. Uh, a quick note, this dot diagram does not in any way mention what direction the object was moving. We just saw in the video is moving left to right. Uh, we can't tell that with this diagram right now, but we're going to fix that a little later. So since the timing was evenly spaced and the object was moving at a constant velocity, then the object was covering the same distance uh, for every time period that passed. Now, if this is the dot diagram of an object that's moving at a constant velocity, if the object is moving from left to right, can you think about what 
this object is doing for the second dot diagram I just put on the screen. We have the spacing very close here in the beginning because the other is moving from left to right. Then this spacing is getting uh, longer and longer as time moves forward. But again, the time between dots is the same. If you have it in your head, let's actually take a look at what is required to make a dot diagram similar to this. So this matches the pattern we just had pretty closely, with the dots on the left being fairly close together and the dots on the right being more further, further spaced. Uh, which means for an object moving from left to right, it basically means this object was speeding up. All right, now that we have seen um, the object move from left to right, and as you just saw, the object sped up, it got faster. Velocity increased from left to right. Since the velocity increased, the distance that was covered over the same time period each time got larger uh, between each of those time periods. Now, at this point, we're going to make a slight change to the program here, because like I mentioned before, dot diagrams are kind of cute, kind of useful, but they don't display a few things that are actually really useful for you. And if you want to get information to your teacher or your grader for the AP exam. So we're going to actually take these diagrams I have right now, and we are going to change them from dot diagrams to what are called motion diagrams, which actually adds a little more information. And the additions are actually quite simple. So one, between these dots, I'm going to put arrows. Now these arrows represent the object's current velocity. Since these arrows are not changing size, that means the um, object is not speeding up or slowing down. Now a motion diagram has one more arrow that's actually quite important, and that is the change in velocity arrow. And in this case, the change in velocity arrow does not exist because quite literally, there is no change in velocity. Velocity is a vector, which means it has a magnitude in any direction. We're gonna get a little more detail in vectors later, but the basics are quite that simple. So taking a look at our second example, typically in a motion diagram, putting two dots right next to each other signifies that the object was at rest. Now here, the velocity vectors are getting larger and larger. This means the change in velocity vector is to the right. So in other words, this first there's no velocity vector. The change in velocity vector is to the right. So I basically add this, this change in velocity vector to nothing, and I get the second one. I add another change in velocity vector, I get the third one. I get another change in velocity vector, I get the fourth one. Uh, the size discrepancy is a little off here, but to show you visually, vector-wise, let's take a look at this. So I have this first velocity vector. So this first velocity vector represents that first vector you, know, you would see in a motion diagram. Here's a change in velocity vector. So I go from here, take a look at the change in velocity vector, and the next velocity vector would look something like this. We get bigger. Then I would take a look at my change in velocity vector again, and it gets even larger to the right. Again, gets even larger, 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 larger. In other words, the velocity vector and change of velocity vector agree with each other. So the change of velocity vector keeps adding on uh, for each time period. Now take a look at the situation I have on the right. My velocity vector is to the left, but my change of velocity vector is to the right. If my change of velocity vector is being added on each time to this, but they're in opposite directions, that means my next velocity vector is not getting longer. It's getting shorter. So this is my second. This is my third. Maybe this is my fourth. Maybe then my fifth one is zero. So this object now came to a stop. Well, what happens now? Well, if the change in the velocity vector still exists, the velocity is still changing and it's changing to the right. So now this object is moving to the right. And then it will start speeding up to the right. 
you will see something very similar. You see these similar things similar all the time. If you were to roll a ball up a hill, it would roll up, uh, it would leave your hand pretty quickly rolling up the hill. It would slow down, come to a stop, and then speed up again as it rolls down the hill. You see the same thing happening when you used to throw something straight up into the air. So let's go back to my dot diagrams here. And now let us take a look at another example of motion and we shall try to make a motion diagram after we watch the actual motion. So watch his movement, pause the video, then try to make a motion diagram that matches what he does. Okay, so we just saw uh, our object move, and he started moving out quickly to the left, slowed down to a stop, and then moved to the right and sped up. So the question is, what would that look like in the motion diagram? Well, I'm going to start with these dots pretty largely spaced because he was moving pretty quickly to the left. So this represents my velocity for that first time period. Then he started slowing down. So my velocity vectors put that one in there, get smaller and smaller and smaller. Then we weren't done. He still had a stop, but then his velocity increased to the right. So the velocity vectors got larger, but this time they're going to the right, which means my change in velocity is which way? Well, looking at the first row of vectors here, he's going to the left. These vectors are getting shorter, which means my change in velocity vector is to the right, because every time I add my change in velocity vector, these vectors are getting shorter. Comes to a stop, now going to the right, these vectors are getting larger, which means my change in velocity vector is still to the right, because the arrows are getting, this change of velocity vector is being added to these, and these, uh, these vectors are getting larger and larger and larger. So this diagram represents the motion you just saw with the man moving left and right, back and forth. In conclusion, motion diagrams are a useful and simple way to communicate the motion of an object. The topics that they are primarily used in, but are not limited to, are kinematics, study of motion, and dynamics, which is basically the study of forces. These two topics take up approximately the first quarter of an AP1 physics course. And the reason for that is they are used in just about every other macrophysics topic in existence. So the understanding of these first two topics are very key. Learning physics is like a pyramid. First, you have to have a really good understanding of the base and then build your way up. So. Thank you very much for joining me for this video. For more information, please make sure to check out any written materials that correspond with this video. This is Mr. M signing off.